Uh, hello, hello there. Niyama Shang here, leader of the Trailblazer Oasis, where we help people like you who've made a life of being successful while being one of the first, one of the only, or one of a kind to be able to go on the next stages of your journey without having to take on some of the challenges of the past. It's really interesting here. Um, I can talk about this because I myself am a trailblazer and I'm on my own trailblazing journey. And today we get a chance to spend time with someone who's been on this journey with me for, uh, for a, a number of months, not years. And we had a conversation in the past that uh, that really started, started set itself off as a catalyst for a the way I look at the business. That was one conversation, and then another conversation uh, brought up this whole concept of of courage and confidence, and what is like how do you actually build up that muscle? And so uh, the the idea here was. I was explaining the, I remember we were, we were in our co-working space and we were sitting on the comfy, comfy chairs, catching up. And uh, as I was, uh, you know, lounged out on one of the blue, blue chairs there, uh, I was explaining to her some of the things that I would, I was really interested in doing and some of the ways that I, that I like to be, that I find like, I, I consider my work, right? It's, it's one thing we were talking about playing on the world stage. Playing on the world stage and being going from the place of being a trailblazer to being a world changer. What did that actually mean? What does that actually mean to bring out your impact in a way that goes beyond you? And as we were talking, she came up with this idea. She's like, oh, it's it's kind of like a confidence gym. It's like you go and you spend time. People come in, they spend time with you. And it's like they do their workout. They do their repetitions and they get they build their muscles uh, in a way that allows them to then go back out into the world and play at a stronger level in whatever they're taking on. I loved it. It was. It, I just felt really seen, really heard, and understood in that moment. Like so, that's that's where this whole concept of a courage gym came from. For me, I I really believe that courage comes first, and the confidence comes as a result of the ongoing use of, of courage. But this is everything we do in our space is to help you find different ways to step into your courage. I tell, I tell people who come on to get coached by me live that in simply accepting my invitation, they've already done their first rep in the courage gym because not everyone will say yes to this opportunity. In fact, most people don't say yes. The number of no's I get around this is, is, is a high number. And for those that do say yes, just showing up here, choosing to be visible, choosing to be visible, not just in terms of having the camera on, but choosing to be visible in terms of like what's real for them and to actually get support. It's something here that um, that I don't take lightly. I don't take lightly at all. I really acknowledge everyone who chooses to be on here either through invitation or reaches out for an application to come in and participate. So, I was asked before we got started here. Well, actually, let me, before we go too far here, let me just, I want to bring in Stephanie into this conversation. Um, uh, Stephanie, I'm going to unmute you now. It is wonderful to have you out here and, and to, to have you join us here. I really do think very highly of you. I think that a lot of the development as to how I think about the business and how I'm choosing to operate uh, has really come as a result of our conversation. So it, it makes me uh, really thrilled to be able to be in this conversation with you. Thanks so much, Niyama. Um, I'm so excited to be here. And I think it's a reflection of the power of uh, what can happen when you bring people together intentionally. And I think that's a big part of my story and, and why I do what I do. Um, so thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, and thank you for, for allowing me to be part of this space. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is uh, the thing is it like you accepted it and that's, that's it. I love being able to meet you as two people who have, who are both just stepping into our power and playing from there. Um, 
you had asked me before we got started and I said, I'll hit record around this. You had asked me some questions around like, why am I choosing this format and how does this fit within the Curry's Gym and do I see it all going going on from there? I wanna share a little bit of that with you right now and then I wanna hear a little bit more about your story. Uh, and the reason I'm sharing this here is like, I find that at this point in the game, a lot of what's happened is I'm documenting my own journey as a trailblazer. There will be a time where, you know, getting on a, on a conversation to coach someone live uh, is, is maybe not even available for me as an option with the number of people that I'm serving, uh, the, the the ways that things have taken off in, in, uh, through the business and so on and so forth. It might be something that's completely like just not even available. So the reason, part the reason for this format for me is, is that honestly, in any conversation, there's two conversations happening simultaneously. Um, there's a conversation that you and I are going to have and and the actual content that's in that conversation. But then there's like this meta level that happens underneath it. The meta level is is around why did we ask the questions that, that we asked? What was it like when we ran into a potential roadblock along the way or there was a moment that like that that we stumbled in? You know, like the meta, another part of the meta of you saying yes to even being in this conversation. So there's two things happening simultaneously. And I think the reason why I like this format is that it gives me an opportunity to really coach and have that coaching showcase and have people see what it's like to, to work with me, but to also work on themselves. And then underneath it, there's some teaching that's going on, even though I'm, it's never explicit in the teaching. And if, and if you're willing to pay attention to the meta level as well, there's there's other levels that are going on. So I see this, I see myself continuing this uh, for a while in the near future. I would love to get to over a hundred like coaching conversations this way. Um, it's it's easy to put together and I can put a small group. So I can, so there's a lot of, I can iterate and yeah. learn as we go along too. I, I love the format because it is, it is so flexible and um, in terms of how it can benefit folks, like there is a one-to-one -one impact and there's a one-to-many as well through the process of impacting one, the observation of that process and what that invites in a group observing means that it's also benefiting people around them. And it's like, it's just such a great way to step in to it, to understand something is to really experience it. And I, I think it's really cool. So I really appreciate seeing, seeing the, the play in the different formats. Yeah. Well, welcome to my lab. Welcome to the gym here. Uh, yeah. I like, I like to say there's, there's, and look for anyone, like there's always, I always find like there's like three ways to play this game. There's multiple ways. Like they can listen and just listen to our conversation and see what comes out from there. And like my invitation is always listen for insight, not information. Mm -hmm. Then they, then they can put themselves in like your shoes. So when I'm asking a question, they can ask themselves like, Oh, how would I answer that question? You know, or, oh, I recognize myself in, in this here, you know? So there's that element there. And then there's also the element of, as a leader, how are you showing up for people? Or how can you build your skills of listening to what hasn't been said or um, or saying saying the things that no one else would say or seeing the things that no, that no one else would would see, right? So there's a number of different ways to play this this game. And that's, that's why I talk about the meta, you know? Because there's, there's so much going on simultaneously. So I, I'm, I'm happy we get a chance to play. Your insight into what's happening here, even just that response, gives a clue as to like how your how your brain works and what makes you so amazing in the world. I love to like like not have that be something that's subtly in our conversation, and instead give you an opportunity to share a little bit about yourself um, from the standpoint of what like most people might see on the outside. I like to, like I really want to give us a chance. My invitation to you is to enter the brag zone. Tell us some of your, your favorite accomplishments. Tell us some of your some of the things that you do that uh, that you're really proud of and how others might see you in terms of what you do from the outside. And then we'll spend the rest of our conversation really on who you are and the transformation for where you're looking to go next. Cool. Uh, oof. Okay, where to start? Um, well, I guess when I think about my story and I will try to enter into this brag zone, I promise I'll try my best. Um, I, I think for me, it comes back to, I, I was, I was um, born and raised in Jakarta, Indonesia, and I've lived in many parts of the world since, and I consider myself very much like 
very much, um, and global citizen sounds really cliche, but I really do feel the, the boundaryless nature of, of my world, the world I operate in um, and the world I'm curious about is, is not bound to um, the definitions of country and place. And I think that's actually one of the things I'm most proud of, like pushing myself to be in new environments and to really openly embrace the world around me, I think has, has shaped where I've entered into my career. And I've been really lucky to have had that opportunity, but also have taken the initiative to, to step into um, really different environments and to really flex that, that particular muscle. Um, so I've lived in about eight countries around the world. I'm, I'm super thrilled to call, call Singapore home at the moment. Um, and my journey and my, the game that I'm playing, I, I started in um, development. So I actually went through university and went through growing up feeling that I wanted to work in the space of international development. And that was probably because I, I grew up in a developing country and seeing a lot of inequality was something that you, you just don't shake that off. I think it, it became a lived experience that I had to embed in my career. But the way I went about it, I, um, I started working in advocacy and designing advocacy campaigns that brought people together around issues that they care about and to advocate for change. And this was at, at the time at a policy level and I was working for uh, a large nonprofit organization um, and at time in New York. And that's where my career really kicked off. Um, but I started to want to explore different styles of change making. So that was really one, one type of change making was within this, this structure. Um, this political structure. And another wave of change making that really excited me was working directly with people, specifically entrepreneurs, innovators, people with really game changing ideas. And um, I joined a, uh, a crowdfunding platform that worked with social entrepreneurs around the world to give them the platform to kickstart their ideas and to lead change in their communities. And that excited me um, immensely. I moved back to Asia I, and I led the growth of this uh, platform all across Southeast Asia made an incredible network of, of friends and innovators that have gone on to do incredible things around the world. Um, and I got to back them. I got to be one of their first backers, one of their first coaches, and it gives me great pleasure and um, something I'm very proud to brag about. Um, and then that led me to my other, I guess, one of my, um, my own baby, which was uh, setting up a space, a physical space and a hub to support more entrepreneurs, particularly in my home country in Indonesia. So I moved back to Jakarta and I set up a space called the Impact Hub, which is part of a global network and a community um, of 100 plus hubs around the world, all in their um, local ecosystems, in their local communities driving change. And we collectively come together to drive that um, in, in, from a global perspective. And so, and I think that really epitomizes my theory of change for why I do what I do. I really believe that there are just so many complex issues and challenges in the world. And I've worked one-on-one -on -one with entrepreneurs and I've worked at a systems level. I think at the end of the day, we need more structures that help us collective. And it's really interested in what is the art and the science around collaboration? What does that look like to actually bring people together from diverse points of view to, to drive systems change? Awesome. I lost you for just a small second there, Stephanie, but um, I think we, I think we've passed it. That, that, that's, that's gone. Um, but actually I, I would like, like to just kind of um, follow up really quickly because you, you said that you'd seen things from a systems level, you've done the one-on-one -on -one, uh, and then it was almost like, it was almost like the Goldilocks was going to be revealed. Uh, and that's when, that, that's when I lost you there. So let's just like kind of without having to go backwards, just like, uh, yeah. What, like yeah, what was kind of the punchline there or what was the insight? So my insight, um, I think my insight from there was it's not one or the other in terms of approach. It was how do we actually have these approaches happening and better supported through, through collaboration and through communities. Cause I think at the end of the day, these like these mechanisms for change are best facilitated when there is a community of trust. And it makes community building and collaboration makes things possible that just aren't possible indi individually or alone, whether you are an individual entrepreneur or whether you are a system that might be outdated. And I think, um, yeah, and I think finding, being able to dip my toes in 
in these different ways of working, ways of collaboration, um, and zooming out of that, the real, the real sense was we just have to learn how to work better together. And I think at the end of the day, whether that's exploring that through a global network um, or whether it's building community in my local, um, in my local city, whatever that looks like, it still requires human to human collaboration and connection. And I'm really interested in the intercultural piece of that, having worked and lived in several environments and growing up in a third culture um, sort of setting and background. Um, yeah, and that, that's the space I'm continuing to explore and, um, and I'm deepening my practice in. Thank you, Stephanie. It's, um, I'm, I'm reminded uh, in this moment here as to, um, just how much I appreciate our conversations, how much I appreciate the way that you you look at the world and uh, and your willingness to continue to find the vehicles of change that allow you to make your biggest impact when it comes to change making. Thank you for thank you for being someone who has stepped into that arena. I really acknowledge you and see see you as that, uh, and who continues to to make strides and bring things forward from that perspective. Thank you. Absolutely. So. Here goes the thing. Like, so I'm getting a bit about what's happening, uh, like what it is that you do out there. Let's spend some time here. Like, I mean, it's, it's I appreciate you joining, uh, jumping into the brag zone. Um, it wouldn't be me if I didn't ask, is there anything else that you like to brag about? And look, here goes the thing. My, my mentor says it's not bragging if it's true. So is there, any, <laughs> is there anything else that you like to, that, that you like to share? And, and from the standpoint of it being something that is also meaningful to you, something that you that, Mm, I think, yeah, I think it's when we talk about accomplishments, we often jump to the things we've done in our career, the things that other people around us have validated. Um, I think something that I have learned about myself that I have, I truly appreciate and I feel enormously lucky to have is, um, is maybe, yeah, is, is the frame frame in which I see the world and I see it as a bunch of, dots yet to be connected. When I meet people, I, my, my default setting is to think about how I can best support them. And that's, and this pattern making and this sense making and the way I see the world, I think has been such a cool gift, especially in my practice. Um, and so, yeah, and I, I think it's awesome. It was it's a bit of an accidental thing. I don't know how it's come about or cultivated, but um, I think that's something really cool, and um, I hope to continue to be able to do better. And that's something I'm I'd like to practice more and bring to the gym, I guess. All right, great. So like, let's let's have that. Thank you there. Let's let's have that as part of our context for today. We may not have to do anything with it, but when in doubt today, or when when you're when when you see things from one perspective, see if we can do another rep. Even this was even just an example of it, right? We had just gone through a process of of sharing uh, your accomplishments, uh, and it was like, can you do one yeah. more? And you did. It was hard. Right? It was and, it was hard. It was like it was there. It was good. All right, awesome. I, again, I, I lost you a bit there, but what I got was that it was not a, it was not it was not an easy thing what you just did there. And I, and I acknowledge you for that. I acknowledge like it's, it's but then, yeah, I'm just going to acknowledge you for that. Sometimes I want to keep going. This is what happens here. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to explain this even more. I'm practicing allowing myself to just let my words be my words and trust in really that what I have said has been, has reached whoever and however mm -hmm. it needed to reach. So Stephanie, what I get about you is that you are someone who is, very willing and very able to put your attention in terms of uh, giving to others and creating communities and being able to help others really come together, not just for uh, the sake of having connection, which is wonderful, but also collaboration. It's beyond, It's th there's action that can kind of come from it all. And I get that you're someone that's, that's consistently in service of others. And I just want to just ask you here, are you open to letting that go for the rest of this conversation and having the focus be on you and having me be able to serve you. Yeah. Okay. I acknowledge you for that. So let's spend the rest of our time here really 
really serving you based on where where it is that you're going. All right. Um, I'm getting called right now to to ask you a bit about your vision. You know, in terms of what it is that you see yourself creating or be or who no it's not about the creating it's more about the who it is that you see yourself mm. being if you and i were going to we're going to come together in three years time and you were the person that like the the leader the person that that you know you really know is in is is playing the game that you want to be playing tell me a little bit about that stephanie i think that person would be a lot more, would be learning out loud, I think. I think one of the things I would like to work on is how do I, how do I learn in a way that brings others on the journey in a way that helps me also build confidence in my practice and what I'm doing but also brings people along in that, in that experimentation. I think I've found it really challenging to find peers working in this space and who can, um, yeah, push, push me in ways that I can see and help me find my blind spots and move me forward. But I've been really reluctant to kind of be more vocal about, about those needs and also more vocal about what I'm learning, uh, what my failures are. Uh, what are the things I'm most proud of? Actually, all these things that even even this experience so far is showing me how little and how uncomfortable I can feel when sitting in that space, right? And I think the the version I'd like to be is one that comes with a bit more of that courage um, and also generosity to bring others into my into my learning and an openness to openness to to share what's working and what's not working in my practice a bit more. Um, and I think I'm still in a phase of my development where I haven't quite found that, uh, that courage yet. Awesome. And if, and if you did have that courage, right, to learn out loud, to be vocal and to be sharing um, with that openness of what's working and what's not working, what would you have then that you don't have now? I think, um, I think I would have a community of practice, one that I would either lead or be starting or catalyzing in some way. Um, so in my, in my work, I'm building a lot of communities of practice, but outside external to myself. I would love to be in a position where I am part of a, a very, a, a, be part of a community of practice that pushes me forward. Um, and one that helps me get up to that, that level I need to get to. I think this is often the um, challenge for a lot of community builders. When you're out building community, um, it is difficult to kind of look in the mirror and see the reflection on yourself and how are you building the community around yourself and whose role is that. So I find myself in that loop and a future version of me would have already seen that, addressed it, and surrounded myself with a community that, that supports me much better. Yeah, I, I find myself um, in this moment. Uh, earlier today, I was writing out some copy for um, the Trailblazer Oasis, which is like the the place where I'm like, all right, the people who really inspire me, let's get together and let's work uh, together to build, like to, to really get a chance to see what our blind spots are mm -hmm. and to get the support that we wouldn't normally get. And one of the things that I had that I had uh, stated in there was like, we are, we are, community builders where people who actually go out and we we choose to lead others because we know and for me in my from, from my perspective it's like i know what it's like to not to feel like i don't belong i know what it's like to try and fit in and i really know what it's like to fit out you know uh and because of that i'm like i'm constantly going out of my way to try and create opportunities for people to feel like they can belong but it's hard to actually find a place where that happens for me it's like like no matter like it's almost as though I'm building all these different communities, expecting it to like serve what it is that I need. Yeah. But it serves all that it serves everyone that I'm bringing together. But the place where I can go, and I am held, I am served, and I don't have to even show up as a leader. I now want to show up as a leader, and I can simply contribute because that's what's being called out of me, as opposed to being called from me. Yeah. Um, that's 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 something that's big for me. Like what. Well, what comes to mind when I say that? 
a hundred percent. I think like the energy, um, the energy that is brought towards building communities. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a. Uh, it's, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of who you are, like to do it really authentically. And I think community builders also come with a, with sometimes a problematic generosity, like in terms of maybe sometimes not knowing what those limits might be, or just not, not seeing where those blind spots are. And I think um, it leaves little energy for me to build, to catalyze my own community of support. Um, so I'd love to get on the front end of that. And at the same time, I think one thing that's really inspired me even walking into this conversation was like my current, I, I feel like sometimes we are often moving in our practice really fast and we feed off this dynamic doing, doing, doing. And it's very rare that I, um, afford myself the time to stop, reflect and share what it is I'm doing, even if it's in a dynamic, like interactive, as you go away, even a format like this, you are sharing with the world. This is what I do. This is what I'm learning with others. And um, I can't remember the last time I sat down, for example, to write a blog post or to record a podcast or a conversation and to, yeah, to be generous in sharing the ways I'm learning with other people. And I'd, I'd love a future version of myself to, to be there. If, if you're down to play right now, would you be open to sharing one or two of your most recent insights in terms of some things that you're learning along your journey? Um, yeah, actually, um, sure. So I think one that's really top of mind for me, um, I just came back from New Zealand. I was there for about two weeks and I was um, exploring this question, how can we be good ancestors with an incredible group of people called the Inspiral Community? Um, and this Inspiral community is incredibly unique. It is sector agnostic. You have folks in there who are coders, developers, philosophers, artists, poets, um, social activists, um, business owners and entrepreneurs um, who come with a heart for ways we can better, better work together and collaborate with each other. And it's it's almost like a collective that challenges the existing structures that bind us to things like um, traditional business or traditional freelancer. It's looking at all this gray space in between and going, are we limiting the ways that we, that we could possibly be coming together as individuals and nurturing our unique strengths? Um, so often within this, this community, like nodes will be created where you build things together, put it out in the world and you come back, you experiment with something else and you're not bound by um, organizational restrictions or restrictions around how you identify with a particular thing or place. Um, and these folks come from all over the world and every year they have a summer retreat. And so this was my first experience attending, but I've been following um, their learning and their research um, for some time. They published a book called Better Work Together, which I highly recommend. Um, but that's helping me. It's challenging, um, challenging the way I see the world. It's challenging the way change I work with. And I'm so excited to bring some of that learning to the communities that I'm working with. Awesome. So I, I missed you just a bit there in the, in because it, it broke up again. But the, the, so the question I'll ask you here is, What's been your, what is one insight that you'd like to share about that experience in this moment? The insight for me was a reminder that there are people experimenting with different ways of change making and in ways that we may not recognize. I think we get very bound by the idea that it happens within individual leaders, organizational structures, or governments is, is my experience. And this, this experience really challenged um, the ways that we can do that and an insight that there are humans who are experimenting with this right now and the future can look, could look really different if we started experimenting with this as well in our own lives, our communities, and our organizations. And there's very simple structures for it, similar to the liberating structures that I shared with you, Yama, before. So think about that, but take it many steps further into how you might hold an entire organization decision-making process and governance in a completely different way. So. Awesome. 
Thank you for that. Um, and I, and I, I wanted to, there was an element of this here where it's like, we're putting all like, you're like, I, at some point I'll be able to share these insights out there and it's like, okay, or what, what would happen if we started, if we came from that person, mm. if over the next three, if over the next three years, rather than getting to the point where you get there, you're, you can just start from that place. I feel like I need to ask you this question here. Cause I want to, I want to see, I want to see what would really serve you. So like, if this was going to be a life changing conversation for you, not just like an intellectually like interesting one, but an actual life changing conversation for you, what would we need to talk about that we, we might have missed? I think, um, help me see my shadows. Mm. What are the things that hold me back? What are, what are those fears? Those are the hardest things to pull out. I think in any intellectual conversation, I think often when we show up to other people, we meet here, right? It's comfortable. And we get away with showing up, showing only what we want to show yep. and not revealing those shadows. So I think sometimes we need that extra support to dig out some Got of those that unblock us. Okay. Awesome. Where would you like to go to do that? Ooh, I don't know. I think, I think I've, um, I do a pretty good job of suppressing it if I'm really honest. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not easy for me to even like know where to start sometimes. Mm -hmm. mm, do you have any suggestions on where? Yeah, there's a lot of different things that we can do. I'm like right now, um, We're going to get to this here. So thank you. Now we have some context. We're going to play with it in, in a different way because it's it's a little bit difficult to go straight at it in, in this this case here, right? Um, what's on your heart right now? If you had to breathe in really deeply to your heart and just like express like either the, the yeah, I'm just curious, what's on your heart right now? I think um, I have a lot of, I'm thinking about how I can care for myself a bit better. I sometimes, I think I've, I tend to focus on what I need to do more of. And I think, I think sometimes, so just to work with the analogy of a gym, I think sometimes we walk into gyms feeling like there's so much to work on. Like we show up there because we know there's work to do. And sometimes the overwhelming sense of I'm at a starting point or I'm a, I've come in here and, or maybe there's even shame. Maybe we walk in with shame because there's like, these are things I need to change or, or work on. Um, and that can feel intimidating. So I'm sensing that I'm feeling that for myself, that I'm feeling intimidated by the work I want to do on myself, the visions I have to do to get there. And then I'm, I'm but I'm also feeling like myself, I'm catching myself and going, okay, well, let's start with care for yourself first. Like, let's love, love that person. Let's love the intention. Let's not get overwhelmed by it. Let's, let's love the intention that you do want to step up into that space. And it's really, it's surprising. It's been a while since I've tested my vision for myself out loud and to think about where I want to go. Again, I think back to the theme of just moving fast in one place. That's where I've been sitting in. Yeah. I love it. So I'm going to invite you here, Stephanie, um, for the rest of this conversation. Um, I'm really good with abstractions and being able to make like analogies and things. And for, for what I'm looking for as we, as we talk through is to see what is, what is it that actually applies to you and you specifically, right? Um, trust me, I, I like, I can play in the analogy game, but I feel like for us right now, it's to be able to see like, what is it that really is true for you in this moment?
Yeah, I think I think back to what I was previously talking about. If I take that a stretch further, I don't feel like I have the community of support I need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my practice, and my practice overlaps with like my personal values as well. So I think it's hand in hand. You know, um, so I'm just taking quick note of that there, the, the, the community of practice and your, your own community of support there. You had said something and it was just one word that, that you had said, but it feels like it, it also ties in with, with, the, with the, the care of self and such. And you talked about energy. You said like, I don't have the energy to go off and actually build what it is that I want to build, to really yeah. go out and do that here. Tell me more about energy in you right now. Yeah, I think that's... If I, if I could zoom in, I think it's actually like my personal care and managing my energy. I think I'm trying to differentiate that from managing time, managing time being really different to where we put our energy and mm -hmm. managing my energy has been incredibly challenging. I, I feel it pulled constantly into the communities I serve and very little left for myself which directly contributes to how little I can spend on, on my own community practice, either finding, identifying those, those individuals and also actively building it, even though it's the thing I really feel like I need right now. And I think I walked away from even that, that experience in New Zealand, realizing that I might not have, I don't have that readily accessible. I had it for a, a period at a moment in time but it's, it is a, it's such a necessary support um, that I need in my life that I don't have right now. And the fear that I feel confronted by in that realization is, feel, is very real for me. And I'm not sure where to start. Can you tell me a little bit more about that fear and that you found in that realization? Yeah, I think the fear that I haven't been putting my energy where it needs to be for myself. Um, and the fear that maybe I won't find the community I need. I won't, I haven't made those investments. So maybe I won't ever, I won't get there where I actually have a community of support that I know who they are, that I will be able to access them and they will be available to me. I think it's, yeah. And it's, it's an overwhelming pros prospect to start that from scratch. Um, yeah. So I think there was, there was a, in that realization itself, I think that, yeah, I was, there was a lot of, um, yeah, a, a lot of, it was surprise, I guess, surprise and fear um, and anxiousness in how to, how, where to from here. I'm just like, thank you here. Like, I, I'm almost like, I want to just like kind of look at this with you and just kind of like, just if I can almost like stand side by side with you and just kind of look at what it is that, that you see and almost like see, see the world through your, through your lens for a little while. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hearing you, you're like being supported by communities is actually, is actually something that you're really looking for and, and basically, basically having your own community. And it was a fear that you found in the realization that it, that it wasn't there and both surprise in there. And what I, what I feel like I'm hearing from you is there's an element of like, now you have to go on and try and start this from scratch. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, or there's there's an expectation, you know, it's it's almost like, yeah, it feels like, I ha not that I have to, but like, that's probably the path I need to take. Like, I need to put in the energy to get what I want out of that. And I, need to, I needed to start two weeks ago, two years ago, kind of thing. That's where that fear stems from. It's like, is it too late? And I know it's, it's, that's just a perception. It's perhaps not a real fear, but if you ask me honestly, that's, that's how I feel. Yeah. I got you on that. I got you on that. The, tell me, tell me a little bit about like the difference between like finding your community versus like building your community. Cause I, like, yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about that as it, as it applies. Yeah. And that's a great question because I think um, the finding and building aspect, like there are, I think it happens in both. I think in both ways, I think you have to build it in order to find it as well and you need to be actively doing both and nurturing nurturing both ways and this points to maybe a a deeper 
um, sort of anxiety or fear around. I've been really nomadic for many years of my life. So there's been a limit, like a lot of limitations on how I can um, build and or find my community, but most of all build. So I'm actually, it's been difficult for me to build my own communities because of that movement. So there's been a reluctance to even, and even when I'm in a position where I can, and you know, I've been two years in Singapore now, um, I haven't. So there's like some kind of fear, whether it's through patterns or pat or the past that has stopped me from, from taking the actions I could have taken. And uh, I wonder how much of that, yes, is the legacy of my identity. You know, like, at, like in terms of the legacy of my identity, I'm hearing you right here, Stephanie. And I'm like, honestly, I'm not sure how building a community is any different than what you have been doing thus far that has gotten you what you've gotten. So it sounds like you're coming up with something novel, like in the way that you're, you're presenting it, but it also feels that what you do is you go into places and you help build communities and you build communities for them. Like you said, like as a community builder, this is, this is what it is. And it's almost like you're trying to take that same path to go mm -hmm. and build yet another community, hopefully for yourself. But you talked about Impact Hub, you talked about all these other places that you've actually gone and built community for them. And it wasn't exact. it wasn't what you needed in that place there. So like, I want to call that out there for me, as I'm standing here looking at it, it feels like, like a path that you've already taken, which has led you to where you are right now. So we'd love to just get your thoughts on that. Yeah. And I think the, the nexus of that, of that energy has been for other people and other communities to serve them, but it's never been, I don't, to be completely honest, I've never been intentional enough about what that needs to look like for me, like designing what that needs to look like for me and actively going out and doing it. And there's, you know, there's a little bit of vulnerability in sharing that, right? I mean, I do this, I live and breathe this for others. And there's a little bit of vulnerability in going, I haven't really done that for myself. And there's a part of me that like, Honestly, like, like I can feel myself like really caring. I'm, I'm like very interested. I'm like, okay, what do you need? Like, what's the personal care that you need? Let's talk about the energy. What's, what's draining you of energy? What's not draining you of energy? Like, that's the path I really want to go down. But I feel that if I go down that path with you, it only comes from like it, it, the end of that path, no matter which way, which way we start, is with you having to like cultivate a whole lot of energy to try and bring all these people together in a, while you're living your own nomadic lifestyle and like you're also figuring out different things around your practice and so on and so forth. And I'm almost like in this case here, the question for me is not, it's, it's more about like who, who do you know that can help you like fulfill this, to, like fulfill what it is that you're looking for? Like where, where, where might what you're already looking for exist or, or who do you know that might be able to support you with that? I'm going to go there first because mm -hmm. I feel like the right now the, your the path is let's go and build another community. Right. Right. So that's a great question. Work um, in my, um, I have a community practice within that company, but what I'm actually seeking is is a diversity that sits outside of the circles I'm currently in. So I'm, I actually think what I'm looking for is outside of what I currently have access to. Yeah. So and let me just ask, also ask you this here, because um, uh, being in Singapore, there's been a, I, I started looking at community from a lot of different ways, right? Uh, not even just community, but just like relationships. So let me just ask you here, um, because I want to make I want to make sure that we're, that we're even looking at the thing that you're looking for. Um, yeah, the words that come up for me are community versus like um, peers versus friends. Mm. Right. Let me just check in with you here. What is it like for you when you think about like your own personal care and like and like something that will continue to sustain you, like. What is it that you're actually, what is it that you're looking for? Is it a community that you're looking for that you, or is it something that's, that's a little bit more intimate that will, that will continue to sustain you? Let me just check in with you on that. Yeah, yeah that, that's really important distinction. Um, I think I'm looking for 
a circle within that. So I see, I see an overlap for me. I know that for a lot of people, these are quite separate things. They're community of practice in which they explore their, their practice and are challenged by people um, that can sit outside of friendships that are distinctly personal um, and unrelated to community, uh, unrelated to their practice. For me, the sweet spot in how I grow is where there's an overlap because I need, I need the trust. Commit to one another that extends beyond a shared practice. Um, and I really like, for example, networking groups and particular, um, I guess maybe more less organic uh, network and community structures haven't worked for me in the past. So I'm really looking for something that straddles those worlds of like peer friendship group and um, a community practice of those who speak the same language and can actually, who are even like above, like a, have many more years before me, like elders in my practice that I can, I can learn with and from. I think that's what I'm really seeking. And it's really helpful even just distinguishing that because I think it's really hard to seek something out to find or build it when you don't really know what it is you're looking for. Yeah, I get that. I get that. There's, um, you know, I, I think, but I'm, I'm a part of a group. I, that has inspired me. It was something that I am now in the process of building it. The Trailblazer Oasis is my version of the group that I, that I joined. I think this is part of the reason why I'm asking some of these questions here. Mm -hmm. Like I fly back to the U S uh, regularly for it. Uh, the I'm probably like 15 years uh, younger than the average age in that in that group there, um, and it's just like one of the most fulfilling things, one of the most fulfilling groups I get to be a part of because, like, everyone's playing a really big game there. Like, my my goal every time I come into that room has been to see every single person as my peer, and and to see how that has that will change my game. It's part of why this this element has. has allowed me to like, like I'm creating in this way. Um, and also to be, to also find my own uniqueness within that space where it's like, okay, there's something that I personally bring to this table that, that um, ex years of experience don't have anything to do with it. At least like, and to be, to be in that, that place of really being able to own from that perspective. I think there's a part of that's like, and I'll be honest, it's in the finding of that that has given me the energy to create in the way that I am right now. I don't need, and it's I, not only has it given me the energy, but it's allowed my practice to get to the place where I can do the work for the sake of the work. Mm -hmm. I don't, for example, I don't need anyone to agree with me or want to become my friend or want to like stay on, uh, like stay there with me. I'm like, I've gotten what I need. I've found a group that's, that's filling that part of me that like I was trying to fill myself, yeah. you know, I found, I found a group of people that have, that have found, that have thick, that have gotten into that portion of it for me. Yeah. The other part that happened there, and I'll just share this with you and then I'd love to get some of your thoughts as I, as I share it. There's no, there's no right or wrong. I just want to just kind of see. Um, I had this thing where I was looking for one place for all, all this stuff. Right. Um, I think I might have shared this with you where like I was, I was used to my friends in life being also my peers. Like they are the same people who are going off and doing great things in the world. Uh, they're, they were my best friends, you know, and the people I spend most time with. Um, and I found myself in a place where like the people around me that, that just, it wasn't happening. And, and you've been with me on the journey of really trying to find like my, my place here and to find that that group of people here uh and part of what has allowed me to now go out and play a little bit differently has been to not have it all be in the same place so i'd be curious for you like and so what i like what i just described to you the group that i'm in like mm -hmm. that's my group of peers those are the people who push me that continue on forward it is also it also hits my community of practice elements as well uh and i'm just kind of curious for you and just 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 to have different ways of looking at this here um, mm -hmm. if there's any space in there for you around a, I, I guess like at, at its core, what is it that you're desiring? I think that's really the, the question at the core. What is it that you desire? Yeah. And I, that's a, that's a really important point. And I, I think I've always 
assumed it's needed to be a certain structure and there's needed to always be that overlap. I'm really open to playing with what that could look like as, as long as it meets my needs. And I almost feel like I need a bit of a roadmap. I need a bit of a, a roadmap for testing, exploring what my needs are, almost like starting a business, like <laughs> exploring what the needs are and designing for that and then testing, implementing, reviewing. Um, and I haven't, I haven't gone through this one structure really intentionally putting energy into this. And I think I need to even go deeper in understanding what it is I need, deeper in understanding and testing what it is that I need. Um, yeah. I think about personal mm -hmm. care there. I think that like, because I've been asking myself throughout this this conversation, like, what are we missing? And may, and may, maybe I have a feeling that there's something along this last, this part here, but without me going too much further down, let me just ask you, if we ended this conversation, it might sound really good. That's like, okay, I need to go off and like come up with my, per like my, my personal needs and make sure I understand that. And then I'll come out and I'll start testing it there. And we could have ended the conversation right here. We're going to be wrapping it up in overall, but we could have ended up the conversation right here. I don't need things to end up in a nice, nice little bow though. Right. If we stop the conversation right here, just five minutes before, like, where we got to the, the real thing, what would we have missed Stephanie? Hmm. I think uncovering it and acknowledging what's really holding me back from that. So I think a solution is a, is to, it's too easy to put forward like and ideate on possible solutions. And I think our minds tend to go there like as entrepreneurs, as those supporting yeah. entrepreneurs, right? But does it really acknowledge and look at the reasons how you got there in the first place? And what fears might sit behind that. And I think I need to sit in that a bit more. And I think that will actually serve me better as I try to respond to it. And I think there's something in it for me that's exploring this role of community care versus self-care. Where, where are those two things linked? And where in what ways are there responsibilities of my own and responsibilities for me to to have within a community care structure and system and, um, and being intentional and distinguishing what those things are. And I think at the heart of it, where you were pushing on was what, like what the specificity of what we mean when we say these things, because it can be really easy and some, sometimes lazy to just paint it by the same brush when there's like so much nuance there. And I think that's what I've been missing. I think that's what we would be missing. Yeah, I think there's like, I, I, I feel like I, that feels that feels like it's on, right? Um, there's something underneath why this, why is this so important to you? You know, I find myself in this moment asking the question like, like, are you good with being alone? You know, I find myself like, like there's, there's, I don't know if we're going to get to like, and this is, this is the thing about like some of the time that we have here. Firstly, I never need this thing to like wrap up and look nice and pretty and all that. Like, that's not it. What I wanted to do in this conversation was to spend some time seeing the world through how you saw it. Um, Cause that's going to give me some, some information as to like where it is that, that makes sense. In our, as we wrap up here, I guess the, the question is you think about this from a deeper perspective here, right? If you can imagine all the dots, that are like around your life, around these things here, right? And you just had to go out and just like find a pattern, make like make sense of, of those dots here, right? If you think about it for yourself, what's the pattern that the dots in your life around this topic are created? I believe in doing things together with people. I might be okay with doing things alone, but I fundamentally believe that we do things better with other people. Like whether that's changing the world or whether that's changing ourselves. And I think that's what keeps driving me back to this need to find it for myself, find that community for myself. 
Awesome. So let's leave, let's leave it here. Like, so what I would say here in terms of like, I like to leave this conversation with an actual practice. I feel like in this, this place here, it feels like there's still some, a little bit more discovery that's taken place. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, The discovery here feels like it's around what your needs actually are. And I think this is this is the, the practice that I that that I will invite you to is a practice of speaking out what your needs are in all the situations where it doesn't seem like it would even make like need to be there. There's an element here of like, and this is this is why I think I, I moved this out of like the abstraction elements of it all. Uh, third and second person are really great ways for us to ignore ourselves. When we say things like, oh, like, oh, even just like, like when we all of a sudden, it's like, okay, collect, like, it, it isn't about me. Or when, like, you know, when you think about it from this perspective, they're really like, they're really like, um, how do I say it? Nuanced ways to keep ourselves from being able to really understand what's happening for us. So like, I, I would look at that as like another part of the practice as you're trying to, to get deeper into it, as you're trying to like see like behind the blind spot there. Anytime that you that you move into a space of speaking either in the second person uh, or in the plural, right? They, we, as people, you know, as entrepreneurs, all those different things, anything that keeps it out of like, this is me in this conversation. This is how I feel. This is like my experience, my lived experience. I would invite you for the next 30 days to every time that comes up to take a pause and just to firstly to just acknowledge that it's happening and then to make a choice to, to ask yourself, am I, am I, am I not giving myself the opportunity to see my own need and to speak myself as, as I really am into this room or am I trying to go around or, or am I, yeah, it's, I, I think you get, you think you get the other side of the, the question there. Yeah. And I actually think that's, it's, you hit a nerve there because I think I, I'm really a default to that. And I think that has been the lack of community or the lack of addressing my own needs has been a direct result of me not being able to express my needs more directly. And I, as a community builder will always revert to the collective. It's almost my language and my way of seeing the world. It is always in a collective sense. I'm experiencing the world. And, but that has harmed my ability or taken away the energy from me to voice and, and back my own needs sometimes. So even I'm really curious to play with that, even like being more conscious of it and seeing how that can show up in my language and how I communicate. How does that change where the energy flows? The energy that I put back towards myself, for example. So I'm really, I think that's a really tangible way I can start to explore that. And even just catching that, I think I just had a penny drop moment where I was like, oh, wow. Like that, that, that's the language I, I use out of comfort, out of safety, but also because it's how I see the world and what might happen if that changes, where, where does energy shift? Does energy shift? Play with that, play with that. And I, and here is something I'll let you in. Like as you go on, you might actually see that more of your community is naturally building itself around you because those people who are your people, they can actually understand that you are what you are representing. You are what you're saying. Like, like it just allows you to be far more present in there so that we can come find you. Like, I think, I think that's one area that was one part that we missed where it's like, you can build your community, you know, you can go out and find other community, but like, how are you showing up so that we can find you? Mm. And that's, and like, it's, it's a really interesting way of hiding. It's so interesting where it's like, it's like, I'm totally amongst all of you because I am not here. We yeah. are, we are all here. Yeah. They are there or you are here, but where's I, I am not here. And, and there's, I, I think that's where I think have some fun with it. And, and as you, as, as you continue on, as you build up that muscle to see it, see what happens if you chose the, like the the another another route mm. the times when it feels really uncomfortable for you to do that it's going to be like are the reps that matter yeah 
Yes. But you can't get to those refs. You can't like until you like unless you like even the small things that don't seem to matter. Like when someone asks you, "What do you want to get for for dinner tonight?" You know, like it's in that moment that like that it already starts to count. All right. Play with that for the next thirty days. Just just like journal, like keep your awareness up and have a filter for that for yourself for the next thirty days. And then let's let's circle back and see see some of the things that you've started to uncover from that. All right. Yeah, I'm up for it. Except the challenge. Boom. Boom. And that is that is a simple invitation. So we'll wrap up this conversation here, Stephanie. Thank you so much here. Thank you for 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 playing. And I'm really looking forward to what what comes next for you. Me too. Thank you so much.